Welcome to Homeschool Conversations with Humility and Doxology, our video interview series with real life homeschool moms and dads. I'm Amy Sloan, a second generation homeschool mom of five, and I am so glad that you've joined us. Be sure to check out all the show notes at humilityanddoxology.com. Today, I'm excited to be joined by my friend, Kara Anderson. Hi, Kara. Hi, Amy. I'm excited to, to be the one joining you today. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Well, Kara went from newspaper reporter chasing down cops in heels to unexpected homeschool mom of two. She currently writes online, co-hosts the Homeschool Sisters podcast, and is the podcast manager at Read Aloud Revival. Together with three of her friends, she co-founded the online Kindred Homeschool Conference and community. And most recently, she's written a book for homeschool moms called More Than Enough. Her passion is to help homeschooling moms find joy and magic in their days with their kids. And that's one of the many reasons why I love and appreciate you and wanted to have you today. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> well, Kara, could you just start by telling us a little bit about your own background, your family, how you came to homeschooling? Sure. Yeah. Like you said, I um, was a newspaper reporter and I loved my job. I loved it so much. I never thought I was going to be this homeschool mom. Like I, I thought that was sort of like my, my passion in life was, was newspaper reporting. And then um, I got laid off when I was nine months pregnant <laughs> and it was the best blessing, the most amazing blessing in the world because I kind of had started throughout the pregnancy realizing like, I don't think I want to go back to work, you know? And then I met this little guy and it was just all over. There was no way. So it was, it was wonderful timing. Um, so I am a mom of two. My kids are 13 and 16 and I've known my husband for 23 years. And, uh, still though, even like, even though I knew I didn't want to necessarily go right back to work, like we never thought we were going to homeschool. Um, we had family members that homeschooled and it kind of freaked me out a little bit, you know, I, it was so new and different. And so, um, when my son was three, we sent him to like a cute little church preschool, you know, just like my husband and I had gone to preschool and he, he was an early reader and he was just a precocious kiddo and he kept getting in trouble because during story time, he wouldn't sit on the line. They had like this little masking tape circle thing and he would not sit on the line so his teacher kept keeping me after class and saying mrs anderson and i was like 29 you know so i didn't feel like mrs anderson um yeah mrs anderson he just won't sit on the line and so i decided the next year we were going to give homeschooling a try and we stuck with it until december when i made a desperate call i talked about this in the book i made a desperate call to the nearby little montessori type preschool and said can I enroll my son in January? <laughs> <laughs> and so he went there for um, the spring. And then over summer, they wanted us to, they wanted to move him up because of the early reading thing into um, the six to nine classroom. And he had just turned five. And all summer long, they wanted us to work on handwriting with him. And like at the time, I didn't realize this, but now, you know, with some perspective, his fine motor skills were just not ready for handwriting. And so we tried it for a few days and I just felt like this is going to be the most miserable summer ever. So we tried homeschooling again and that time it stuck. And now we've been at it for 11 going on 12 years. Wow. That is, that is such a great story. I love every time. I never get tired of hearing that he won't sit on the line story because I think that's something so many people can, can relate to. I mean, I know, so I'm a second generation homeschooler and I always knew I wanted to homeschool. And I remember being there with my little boy who was my firstborn, also an early reader, but very active and very intense. And I just remember watching him run circles around the downstairs of our living room and just being so thankful that he didn't have to go sit somewhere for you know six eight hours a day yeah yeah for sure yeah um you know it was interesting because the same little boy that wouldn't sit on the line 
you know, and I have a post about that over at my site that kind of tells the whole story of it. But um, the same old boy that wouldn't sit on the line, he loved books and he loved stories. He just needed to be able to move while he was listening to them. And, you know, it, it was remarkable because he was taking it all in, but he was very active. And he, I think he kind of needed to be active in order to take it in. So, yeah. And I love that freedom that we have with homeschooling. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Kara, how would you describe your family's homeschool kind of personality, philosophy, and how has it changed over the years? Okay. So, um, along with my book, I have this audio companion where I talk to my three homeschool mentors and I ask them each three questions. And I'm, really grateful for that because I, in talking to Pam Barnhill, she brought up something about this that has like changed my mindset a little bit because I used to sort of, I didn't like labels because I felt like, oh, they like box us in and they make us, you know, have to like keep to these standards. And, you know, so I, I don't like using labels when I describe my homeschool. And, and she was saying, you know, if, if you can think about labels as these are ways that we communicate with people and we share what we're doing. And I thought, you know, that makes a lot of sense because instead of just telling people like, well, we're like interest led homeschoolers that, you know, are kind of this and we do some unit study stuff and whatever. Um, you know, I would launch into this like monologue <laughs> where, you know, and people just want to know, like half the time they're just being polite. Like they don't even really they just want the short answer. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, um, so that's really good. I, I love that, that Pam brought that up. Um, so the kind of short story is that we started out as very Waldorf influenced homeschoolers and that didn't work for us a hundred percent. And I felt like we weren't doing it right and that we weren't doing it enough. And then that really made me doubt myself a lot. And so I talk about that in the book too. Um, how I sort of realized like, but wait, it's okay to take what works from a philosophy and hold on to that and then just like leave the rest for the other people who it works for their family type of thing. So now we really have become, I would say, a relaxed, interest-led homeschoolers um, who at the same time, my kids get like these passions and they kind of <laughs> die really deep into them. But, um, but I guess that's part of the interest-led part. Yeah. Oh, I love what you said about labels because it, that makes me think of like personality typing systems, you know, like mm -hmm. you, you can feel like, but don't label me with like four letters or a number. I'm, I'm, I don't like to be boxed in or labeled, but sometimes it's just like a shorthand way of communicating with someone yes. else. It's, it's yeah. just shorthand. Yeah. Totally. Yep. Yeah. That's a really good way to put it. I like that. Um, so in your new book, which I got a chance to read and I just loved it. And I was trying to like not pick out all my favorite quotes, you know, to ask you about today. Cause it was like, <laughs> well, people need to go get the book and read it themselves. Um, but one of the, uh, one of the quotes I really loved is you said, it's hard to change opinions. It's much easier to change your own mindset. And I just loved that. So how, like, that's good in theory. So how, <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> how can we though? Like, how do we, when we're suddenly faced with this like person who's questioning, you know, everything about everything we do, how can we as homeschool moms grow in our own confidence and kind of resist that urge to meet the requirements we perceive, whether rightly or wrongly, that are coming from other people? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, I think that this can be really hard because a lot of us, I think we're raised to be like good girls, you know, and we were kind of like almost raised to seek approval, you know, like, oh, you're doing a good job type of thing. So I think like just realizing that what we are doing is not, not the traditional path. And so we can't really expect general approval from people, you know, I mean, right off the bat, they're confused. Like, because when you go places, what do, what do they ask kids? They're like, what grade are you in? How school? You know, like, th because people, <laughs> that's kind of a whole bigger thing. I don't think people always know how to talk to kids, you know, right. um, but you know, they, so it's always like, what grade are you in? And you know, and then like, <laughs> at least with my What's kids, your favorite subject? <laughs> what grade am I in? Well, <laughs> Um, so the thing is, we only have so much time and so much energy, like 
those are limited resources. And if we spend all that time and energy trying to like meet other people's expectations and keep, you know, our great aunt happy or the dentist happy or whoever, you know, if we're trying to like, that's really taking our focus away from our kids. And so I just think that instead of worrying so much about what everybody thinks all the time, we can just invest in our kids instead. It's just, it's, I I mean, I'm not normally like a very analytical, like logic based person, but it's like it, to me, it's just a better way to invest those limited resources. Yes. Yes. Oh, I love that idea of you only have so much energy. Where are you (laughs) going to spend it? Do you really want to spend it on these random strangers at the grocery store (laughs) or on your own children? Like what's really more important? Yeah. Have you ever had one of those things where like you're on the phone and you're just like, you know, you realize you're talking to somebody and you're like, it's just not. And then meanwhile, your kids need you, you know, and it's like, but you're trying to explain something to somebody who really doesn't want to get it anyway. And it's like, which do I do? I'm just going to, you know, like (laughs) just put the phone down, let them keep talking and like actually pay attention to my kids who, you know, um, need me for survival, you know? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. um, When I remember when my, uh, my older kids, you know, were playing at the playground and somebody would be like, what grade are you in? And my oldest especially is like very precise and he used to be stymied when the, like the pediatrician would say, what's your favorite subject? Because in his mind, like he literally had things categorized by like order, almost numerically yeah. valued. And so he would be like, so concerned about giving the correct answer. Like, wait, let me recalculate. <laughs> you, know, you can see the numbers like swimming around his head. And I'd be like, it's okay. Yeah. It doesn't have to be like your absolute favorite. Like, just what do you like? So Mm -hmm. when someone would say like, what grade are you in? He'd be like, well, in math, I'm in this grade and in, and I, oh no, oh no, (laughs) (laughs) please, please don't, (laughs) please don't. We're, we're the weird homeschoolers. So now everyone will like drill before we go somewhere out. He's like, all right, here's the grade you're in. Just as a reminder. Yeah. (laughs) My friend gave me that tip recently. And I was like, why have I not been doing that for the last, you know, however many years that it's like, as you're on your way to the dentist, like, okay you guys, you're in third grade and sixth grade or whatever. So (laughs) exactly. Exactly. (laughs) Okay. Well, another one of my favorite quotes in your book says, don't let the method boss you around. And you kind of touched on this a little bit earlier when you talked about using labels as helpful tools, but finding Mm -hmm. the freedom to make them work for yourself. So what are some practical ways we can you know, learn from methods and kind of take what works for us, use them as tools instead of tyrants that are judging us the whole time we're homeschooling. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, I think that um, it's hard because like a lot of these methods were created a long time ago or they were created for classrooms. And then you're like this mom with like two kids and a nursing infant and you're trying to like recreate them in your dining room, you know? And so like right there, you're sort of setting yourself up to not be, um, you know, a hundred percent successful because so, um, I mean, I, I think that when you think about it that way, it just makes sense that like you wouldn't have to follow a method 100%, you know, because, um, it's, it wasn't created for you and your family. And that's the thing too, is that all of our families are unique. We're all different. We all have, um, you know, as moms, we have strengths and weaknesses. Our kids have strengths and weaknesses. So I just think it's really important to look at a method and be like, um, you know, for instance, with, with Waldorf, which is what we started with, there was so much beauty there and so much that just really like spoke to me. But then I would go to this Waldorf forum that I was part of, like, back when there were like Yahoo groups. Do you, do you remember? Those? Back in the day. <laughs> You're younger than me. But, um, you know, so these Yahoo groups, and so I would go there and I would ask questions and I would, all I would get was like judgment and like, you know? And so I think that we have to realize like, if we're, if we're part of a group, like a co-op or whatever, where we're feeling like we're not X enough, like that probably isn't the group for us and that's okay. Like I like to say as scary as it is, it's better to not have a group at all than to be in the wrong group. 
you know, and you might just have to keep looking for your people because there's nothing wrong with you. You know, there's nothing wrong with your family that this particular philosophy doesn't fit you 100%. Yeah. You know, that gives me a thought too, thinking about it from the other side of the coin. As we talk to other homeschool moms, you know, to be that person who accepts that other family, even if they don't do our philosophy the exact same way that we do, or just even asking questions. If someone says, you know, I'm an XYZ type of homeschooler, just be like, oh, well, tell me more about what does that look like in your family? Sort of those yeah. open-ended questions where you're really caring about the person as an individual and their family mm -hmm. and not just the, I guess, the label or the philosophy. Well, yeah, because, I mean, we never know what other people have going on you know, other, their really like true. invisible struggles that they have mm -hmm. and maybe why something doesn't work for their family. And I mean, for instance, like, again, like I'm not picking on Waldorf because like I said, I, I love it. But if you look at these Waldorf catalogs, like the wooden toys, the beautiful wooden toys, that are so much a part of it are so expensive, you know? And I mean, to put that on a mom, like, in order to do Waldorf well, you have to have this set of hand-carved animals made by like one man in Vermont who makes 10 of them a year and they're each a thousand dollars or, you know, like, I mean, that's a huge exaggeration, but you know what I mean? That it's like, to put that on every family, it's, it's, yeah, it, it, and it keeps you from connecting with them because they might be people that you could really truly connect with if you can just get past this thing of like, oh, but they don't do this part of whatever. So yeah, find the things that we share in common instead of just focusing on the things that make us different. Yeah. Yeah, yeah totally. Okay. Another thing that you talk a lot about, Kara, in, in your book and um, on your website is you talk about finding helpful homeschool mentors in the midst of all the noise. I mean, I guess we're kind of part of the noise because we're online and we're talking like right now. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hopefully this we're is helpful. Noise. <laughs> but hopefully this is helpful. Don't turn us off. Right. 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 <laughs> but there can just be so much. Everyone's saying if you want to have happy, healthy, smart, you know, successful children, you need to buy this, do this, or the yeah. pictures and everyone looks so happy as they're sitting at the table looking lovingly in each other's eyes and you think, oh no, my kids are like hitting each other over the head right now. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> so how do we kind of choose helpful mentors, know how to process all the input that we're getting? Yeah. Yeah. And you know, the other thing is like, you know, maybe has somebody has 500,000 followers and you think, well, they must know what they're talking about if all these people are following them, you know? So I think one of the big things is just realizing that like your best friend can love what somebody has to say, your sister-in-law, all the ladies at your co-op, whatever. But if you are following somebody online who is routinely making you feel bad or less than, like uh, unfollow. I mean, just even if it's just for a little while, because it, that's not helpful to you in any way and you know it's it's hard because we see like on Instagram for instance like we see these little squares of perfection you know because it's everybody's like best and brightest and shiniest moments that they're sharing and it can be really easy to feel like if our life doesn't look like that you know all the time um that, you know, we're not good enough or that we're getting it wrong or something. So um, I think one of the keys is just to look, you know, for people out there that help you feel good about yourself and what you're doing. And you can really identify with what they're saying. And it's not just purely like aspirational things. You know what I mean? Like it's not, it's great to have encouragement and ideas, but if ever, Everybody that you're following are these people where you're like, oh, someday I'm going to be like them. It just feels really defeating on a daily basis. Um, and I think the other thing is like true mentors um, aren't supposed to change who you are. You know, they're supposed to help you be more who you are, not less who you are. So, you know, if you're following these people that are telling you that you need to like make these 
deep like changes or that your family needs to be different or something like I, that's not really anybody else's business to tell you, you know? <laughs> so, um, I think, you know, just keep searching out those people that help you feel good about you and help you and your family and help you find your own voice and your own confidence. You know, earlier you were talking about having limited energy to be able to, to give out. And so it choosing wisely to invest that on our kids, it's kind of, the same way like there's only so much input you can take as well before you Mm -hmm. just get overwhelmed and maybe there is something where you're like I see this thing our family needs to grow in or or whatever because we all can grow and change but choosing really wisely like some random person on the internet who doesn't really know you or your kids or Mm -hmm. maybe a local friend who maybe doesn't understand everything about homeschooling but really loves you and really loves your kids Mm -hmm. maybe they would have more wisdom than some random homeschool person right yeah because you really like you don't really know what's going on for that person and we're all making trade-offs behind the scenes and it's like okay so you know this person has this like beautifully decorated like not even homeschooling you know beautifully decorated home or you know makes these gorgeous meals or whatever like she's making some kind of trade-off that we're not seeing because we do all have that limited time and energy and we can't all do it all like it's just not possible so yeah yeah Don Garrett a lady desk do you you know of course you know she did this great thing I think it was on Instagram I need to find this and put this in the show notes because it's just did you see when she did the the mixture where there was like a one woman's face but it was created from all the little different pieces of other people's faces And it was this whole idea where we create this like mythical, perfect homeschool mom in our head. And we don't even realize that we've taken the best strengths of all the different people and put them all together as if we're supposed to be able to do that all at the same time. But that's no one. That's no one. Like as we're scrolling, our brain does that. It says like all the moms take trips to Hawaii. All the moms make these like amazing, you know, science projects that their kids actually like to do. All the moms kids are doing math flashcards and not putting up a fight. All the moms, you know, and, and so we think like we have to be this in order to be doing well because we're seeing everybody's, yeah, like shiniest moments. And, and that's not, that's not true because that same mom that just shared the picture of like, you know, her whole family's in Hawaii obviously she's not at home baking her own bread and, you know, doing the flashcards and teaching her kids Latin. She's in Hawaii. Like, you know, so yeah, it's, (laughs) I mean, if I had to choose, I'd choose Hawaii over Latin (laughs) and I'm a classical educator, but still. Yeah. 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 (laughs) Maybe Latin in Hawaii. Maybe that's where it's at. (laughs) Yes. Yes. We will do our chants on the beach. Sounds great. Yeah. With a pineapple. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, the, my, uh, my middle daughters and I just finished reading a book about Hawaii, like the history of Hawaii. They picked it. It was very random. Um, but I didn't really think about checking the publication date. And so at the very end of the book, it's like, and maybe one day Hawaii will get to be the 49th state. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> random Hawaii story. I was like, kids, we need to go to the library. And like, Hawaii is a state, yeah. just so you know. <laughs> Yep. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. All right, Carol, what are some of your best tips for finding joy and magic in the day-to-day of homeschooling? Because that is one of your passions and something you're really good at. Okay. So this freaks people out, but I'm going to tell you to do less because if we're, if we're looking for joy and magic, like we have to slow down and be able to look for it. You know what I mean? So if we're doing too much and we're running around and we don't have any room to just like sit and kind of be with our kids and just enjoy the moment as it is, you know, it's like we're going to miss out on those unexpected when our kid says something really cool, when we're all like laughing over a book, when, you know, we're just playing a game together, your kids say something funny, all those kinds of things. So I think my biggest tip for that is to, and when I say do less, I mean like consciously just choose like, 
a little slower pace and to build in a little margin into your days. Like I'm not saying like, <laughs> you just all have to sit and like stare at each other, you know, but um, <laughs> you know, it, it's hard because we get all these great ideas and we get, um, you know, there's in a lot of places, like, I mean, there's all these homeschool opportunities that are springing up and things that we can do. But if we can kind of just make an intentional effort to make sure that we are leaving a little bit of room and, um, you know, making room for like the unexpected and the, the, the fun and the random to come up. So just doing less, but being, doing that so that we can be more present. I love that. Yeah. Just having that white space means that if something spontaneous comes up, you can do it instead of being like, no, we're on a schedule. We got to get to the next thing, get to the next thing, which I can relate to. I can sometimes do that. I think we probably all have had days like that. And then you're like, what am I doing? I don't want my kids to remember me as the mom who's always like, come on, got to get to the next thing. That's (laughs) kind of not the point and not why I chose to homeschool. So, right. Yeah. 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 All right. Do less. That's going to be my my thing to remember for the next week. It's a good thing. (laughs) All right. Well, Kara, could you tell us where people can find your book? And you mentioned the audio companion earlier. So tell us the the folks who are in that. And then where else can people find you around the internet? Okay. So you can find my book at more than enough hyphen. I'm going to say that again. <laughs> I'm used to typing it out and it sounded funny coming out of my mouth. More than enough hyphen book.com. Um, and the audio companion is awesome because I sat down with my three homeschool mentors and I asked them each three questions. And so I talked to Jamie Martin from Simple Homeschool. I talked to Pam Barnhill and I talked to Sarah McKenzie from Read Aloud Revival. And they each gave these fantastic bits of insight that are just so good. I like have been listening back to it because they each bring their own unique perspective, but it's just, it's like one of my favorite parts of this whole thing. (laughs) Um, So that's also, that will be available um, if you go to that more than enough hyphen book.com. And then um, I write over at karasanderson.com and I'm on Instagram at at Kara Stevenson Anderson, which I know is a mouthful. I probably need to change that at some point. <laughs> and then I'm on Facebook at facebook.com slash Kara Stevenson Anderson. Awesome. And I will have all those linked up easily within the show notes. So That's probably a lot e- easier than me trying to talk about them, huh? <laughs> yeah. When you start trying to say website URLs, you start realizing it's, <laughs> it's a bit of a tongue twister. It's like slash hyphen backslash.com. Exactly. Kara, thank you so much for coming and chatting today and for sharing your wisdom with my audience. I can't wait to get this out to everybody. Yeah. Thank you for inviting me. This has been really fun. Have a good rest of your afternoon. You too.